Welcome back to Morning Musings. This is number 11 in our series of studies on 1 Corinthians 15, the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15. We've been laying the groundwork for understanding this great chapter. And I began to to begin examining some of the false concepts, the false basic presuppositions with which most commentators approach this great chapter. Do you realize that one of the one of the, if not the most common assumptions that is made about 1 Corinthians 15 is that there was a group of people at the church at Corinth that were denying the resurrection of the dead? Well, everybody knows that, right? Wrong. Like I said, this is one of the most basic fundamental assumptions that is made about this great chapter. But folks, that is simply not true. Paul is arguing against a group of people that are denying not resurrection. They are denying the resurrection of a very specific, very focused, very distinctive group of people. Now, I'm going to share with you Paul's response and Paul's method of operation. Paul argues, you know, Paul was a fantastic logician. And he uses a series of modus potens arguments. Modus potens means that he says, well, if you take this position, then you have to believe this as well. If that's true, then this must be true. And so Paul will take some of the things that the scoffers at Corinth either did or did not believe and say, if you say that the dead ones, and that's the literal of 1 Corinthians 15, if you say that the dead ones are not raised, then guess what? That must mean you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Now, the force of Paul's argumentation was to cause them to think, to recoil in horror at the implications of their own belief. Now, some commentators have said, boy, Paul was a horrible, horrible uh, debater. Because here are these people arguing that there is no resurrection of the dead, period. And so when Paul said... If you say there is no resurrection, then Paul, then that means, Paul would argue, that even Jesus was not raised from the dead. And based upon the false assumption that Paul is arguing against people who do not believe in resurrection at all, then that group of people should have said, Paul, that's exactly what we're saying. Jesus wasn't raised. But you see, that's not true. And so, we need to see that these individuals, this group of scoffers, number one, they did believe that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Now, Paul said, if the dead are not raised, your faith is vain. Folks, they did not believe their faith was in vain. Or else, why are they still part of the church? Why are they still a member of that fellowship of believers in Jesus? They do not believe that their faith is in vain. And yet Paul says, if you deny resurrection life to the dead ones, then that means your own faith is in vain. The result of that argument, Paul was hoping would be that they would go, oh, no, 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 Paul, we don't believe that. We don't think our faith is in vain. We're saved. We're Christians. We're believers in Jesus. And Paul says, well, you know, you cannot deny resurrection life to the dead ones without denying your own resurrection life, salvation life. Paul said, if the dead ones are not raised, then we, the apostles, are found to be false witnesses. And Paul's hoped-for response was, from those individuals, Paul, we accepted your preaching. 
we do not believe you are a false prophet. So Paul would respond by saying, well, if you're not accusing me and the other apostles of being false witnesses, then since we preach the resurrection of the dead ones, you have to believe in that as well. And boy, this is where it gets powerful. Paul says, if the dead ones are not raised, then also, that key word is also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Now, the, the, the desired response on the part of the scoffers is, Paul, we do not believe that Christian saints who have died have perished. And Paul says, well, if you deny resurrection life to this group, you've got to deny it to this group. And Paul's desired response is, oh my goodness, we didn't realize that. The resurrection of this group, i.e. Christians, dead Christian saints, is tied to the resurrection of this group, the dead ones. Folks, it's absolutely critical to follow Paul's form of argumentation that proves beyond a shadow of a, of a doubt that those in Corinth were not denying resurrection. They were denying resurrection to a very specific, very focused, and very limited group of individuals. As we will see in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 and following, Paul is absolutely not denying or discussing, I should say. He's not discussing what is raised. He is discussing who is raised. And the scoffers were saying, this group over here is not raised. We will be raised because our sins have been forgiven. We are believers in Jesus. And Jesus rose from the dead. This group over here, though, they perished. Now, the Christian dead haven't perished, but that group has. If we fail to honor these distinctions then we wind up making the basic false assumption that Paul is simply addressing a group of people who deny resurrection, period. And that is not what was happening at Corinth. Sam Frost does a great job of illustrating that from the text, with logic, in this book, Exegetical Essays, of the resurrection. Go to my website, donkpreston.com or bibleprophecy.com. God bless. Have a great time. Be safe. We'll see you later.